Channel 4's brief around the murder detectives was to see if it was possible to create a, a sort of a box set uh, around a murder investigation, so multiple episodes that could run consecutively, uh, possibly over consecutive days. Um, I think the other thing about it was to make a series about a murder that wasn't simply about a murder investigation. It looked into the other worlds uh, that a, a murder impacts upon, so the, the, the victim's family and potentially the family of the perpetrator. So it was more of a 360 degree view of a murder rather than simply following the process of an investigation. You put notice in the film that there is no interviews with the police in vision. I used like audio thought tracks with them instead. Um, the the way it's shot, it's shot with very shallow depth of field, often on a long lens, often meetings and stuff is shot through doors and windows and blinds. Structurally, there's there's quite a few scenes where there's parallel action. Um, so you move from different worlds within you into cutscenes using different worlds, and that's more of a trope of drama. Um, and there's quite a, the score is quite big across the films, and music's used quite heavily, which again, you know, may be more associated with a drama convention. You've got to gain the trust of the people on the ground. So it's no, it's no point really having the. Um, the goodwill of the bosses if they're not the people who you need to follow follow around or they're the people you need to make your film because you need to have the cooperation and the desire from uh, you know the rank and file. I think in the murder detectives what was particularly difficult was trying to find a family who would want to cooperate in a situation like this they're in a state of shock, bewilderment, and then a documentary crew is trying to make a film with them as well. You have to give them the comfort of knowing that if they don't want their inclusion in the film later, then they've got that security that they can say that to you. Because I don't think morally you can, or ethically, you can film with them. And if they want to pull out of it later, say no. But I think if you're patient and transparent and honest with them, uh, they're the best qualities for sustaining and growing a relationship of that sort. It's the wrong way to start a relationship with a contributor is giving them a piece of paper which, as we know, is full of legal jargon about exploiting their contribution in uh, every corner of the world in perpetuity. Um, so I think what you've got to do really is grow a relationship with a contributor first and then pick the right time when you're going to talk to them about a release form and explain why that's needed. But certainly don't turn up on day one with um, asking them to sign their life away. I think it's a real vocation and you've got to have a passion for um, documentary. You've got to... I think you have to, that a passion will help you find a voice. And if, I think if you don't have a voice in documentary and you don't know what you want to say, then you probably shouldn't be in it.